Have you ever looked for a quick and easy way to create a watercolor background in Illustrator? If your answer is yes, then you're in the right place. Hi there everyone, my name is Andrei Marius and in this Embatotas Plus tutorial I will show you how to create this watercolor background in Adobe Illustrator. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements, where with a simple subscription you can get unlimited access to millions of creative digital assets, such as music, graphics, including watercolor backgrounds, photos, fonts, and many more. You can subscribe right now with the link in the description. Let's open Illustrator to create a new document. Select pixels from this drop down menu, set the width to 1920 pixels and the height to 1080 pixels. Make sure that the color mode is set to RGB and the resolution to 72 pixels per inch. And then click this button to create your new document. You can press Ctrl and 0 to fit this artboard on your entire screen. And before we start the work on the design, go to Window in the menu bar and open the Brushes panel, the Color panel, the Layers panel and the Transparency panel. Once you're set, you can select the Lips tool from your toolbar and click on your artboard to open this window where you can easily set the size for the shape that you wish to create. Let's make it a 150 pixel circle, click OK to create your new shape and then focus on the color panel to set the color of your shape. First select the stroke and remove the color and then select the fill and replace the white with 31, 102 and 158. Press Ctrl and plus a few times to zoom in on your circle and then go to object and create gradient mesh. Set the number of rows and columns to 7, keep the appearance set to flat and the highlights to 100% and then click OK to easily turn your circle into a gradient mesh. Now switch to the lasso tool font from your toolbar and use it to draw a selection around these points to easily select them. Once you're done, move to the color panel and change the color of these points to 0, 148 and 211. Get back to your mesh and use again the lasso tool to select these two points. Hold down the shift key to add to your selection these points. And again, hold down the shift key to select all these points. Once you're done, return to the color panel and change the color of these nodes to 0, 202 and 234. Head back to your mesh and use the same technique to select all these points. And once you're done, return to the color panel to change the color for these selected nodes to white. For the next move, you'll need the Wrinkle tool. If you can't find this tool inside your toolbar, all you have to do is click this button and drag the Wrinkle tool inside your toolbar. Click again this button to close the panel and then double click the Wrinkle tool to set the settings for this tool. Start by setting both of these settings to 60 pixels, the angle to 45 degrees and the intensity to 100%. Set both of these settings to 100%, increase the complexity to 6 and lower the details to 1. Make sure that you have all of these boxes checked and click OK. Switch to the selection tool so that you can select this entire gradient mesh and then reselect the wrinkle tool to distort your mesh. Click and drag and make circular movements to distort the lines of your gradient mesh until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this. Once you're done, move to the transparency panel and change the blending mode of your distorted gradient mesh to multiply. Now press Ctrl and 0 to fit the artboard on your entire screen. Switch to the rectangle tool from your toolbar and use it to create a shape that's the size of your artboard. Click OK to create this new shape. Make sure that the fill color is set to white 
and then focus on the control panel to set the alignment to artboard and click these two buttons to easily center your rectangle. Now move to the layers panel, open your layer and drag this rectangle in the bottom of the layers panel and then lock it to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident. Press Ctrl and minus to zoom out a bit and then drag this gradient mesh outside your artboard about like this. Now hold down the Alt key and just click and drag your gradient mesh to easily duplicate it. Continue to use this technique to add more copies, scale and rotate these copies as you wish, and create something like waves above and below the background until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this design. Once you're done, you can use the selection tool to select all of these gradient mesh copies, press Ctrl and G to group them, and then focus on the transparency panel to lower the opacity of this group to 40%. This group will serve as the background. You can lock this group to make sure that you will not select or move it by accident, and then reselect your original gradient mesh. Remember to drag it on top of the group in the layers panel and then use the same technique to add a bunch of new copies until you end up with something that's somewhat similar with this. The elements of this new set of copies shouldn't totally cover up the first one. Once you're done, select all of these copies and press Ctrl G to group them, lower the opacity of this new group to 40%, and this group will serve as the middle ground of your composition. Make sure that you lock this new group, move again your original gradient mesh in the top of the layers panel, select it, and create one more set of copies that shouldn't totally cover up the first and second groups. Again, select all of these new copies, press Ctrl G to group them, lower the opacity of this new group to 70%, and for the final touches, let's create a brush. Start by selecting the ellipse tool from your toolbar and use it to create a six pixel circle. Click OK to create this new shape. Fill it with 0, 148 and 211. And then click this new brush button from the brushes panel to save it as a scatter brush. Set these variations to random and the values between 18 and 100, 10 and 1000, and minus 160 and 160. Click OK to save this new brush and grab the paintbrush tool from your toolbar. Use it to add some brush strokes with the help of your scatter brush. When you're done, you can go to the Layers panel, hold down the Shift key to easily select all of these pads. You can adjust the size of the brush by changing the thickness of the stroke. And finally, press Ctrl and G to group all of these pads and lower the opacity of this new group to 50%. With this final touch, your design is complete. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Remember to hit that like button as it helps me know that I did a good job. Subscribe if you aren't already and don't forget to click the little bell icon to be notified of any new tutorials. If you are looking to learn even more, you can always check out some of the many tutorials that Mbato Task Plus has to offer. I'm Andre Marius and I'll see you in the next video.